Hey everybody, happy Friday and welcome back for a really cool edition of Lunch Break Live today with me, Ivana. I have got the Birmingham Zoo here with us. Now I've got the VP of Living Collections, Holly, and the Elephant Manager, Adam, here. Now uh, I'm going to take, let them have the whole screen in a second so you can see. We had to make sure Holly and Adam were six feet apart, so they're a little bit more spread out, so I'll let you see all of them. And, um, and then I will let you see all of the elephants that are back there. We've got two elephants and Adam is going to tell you all about them. Um, but first, I want to hear from either of you, Holly or Adam, what is it like at the zoo right now with uh, with nobody there except for the keepers? So the zoo is really quiet right now. Um, it's a little strange with how it goes down. We miss seeing everybody and talking to everybody. Um, the animals continue to get the same level of care they were getting before, but it definitely feels a little empty around here um, with all the sound of kids, sound of the kids running around and playing and um, everybody really enjoying the animals. And, you know, it, I'm sure the animals feel definitely a little bit like, where where is everybody you know th this seems a little bit uh this seems a little bit different i know that they are aware something is is going on yeah so some of the animals are probably more uh capable of seeing that than some of the others i'm sure some of the primates especially really miss uh, all the people watching that's a big big part of their day enjoying seeing what the people are doing um, some of the animals, like the elephants, they're a little farther off. They're probably not noticing quite as much. Maybe the noise is a little lower. Um, and then, obviously, our animals, like our ambassador animals, that really enjoy meeting the people on a daily basis, they're the ones that are probably missing on that. But their keepers are giving them extra attention just to, to get them through these times. And uh, tell me about the two elephants that you have behind you. I can see, I know there's two of them there. They're kind of huddled up a little bit together, but um, but we can see them. And I know everybody at home is excited because they haven't been able to see them in the flesh lately. I know a lot of people, a lot of parents, uh, if you're like mine, took us to the zoo like every day during the spring, the summer. Um, so I know we've got a lot of kids who are missing them. So tell us about the two elephants you've got, you've got there behind you. So the elements that are behind me are Ludi and Gadzi. Um, currently, the, uh, Gadzi is the one that is facing us with Ludi facing away. These are our two younger boys. Uh, they're 10 and 11, with our third being Uwagi, uh, who's in a different habitat right now. These two are really enjoying the weather. They're doing lots of wallowing, and I'm sure they're missing you guys as well. Uh, they're having fun in this nice like spring weather that we're all kind of missing out on here at the zoo. And I know that this is a difficult time for the zoo as it is for any other organization, any other business around uh, around the country right now. So I know that the zoo has talked about how much it costs to feed the different animals every day. Um, Holly, could you talk a little bit about what the zoo is doing in uh, regards to its fundraising or how this shutdown has really impacted the zoo? So... Our care of the animals is, is staying the same. We, we have all of our animal care staff here, all of our veterinarians here. So it's really important to us that we're maintaining the same level of care. But obviously with no one coming in the gate, that is impacting um, our revenue. So um, if, if people want to help, we have a great website set up at birminghamzoo.com slash donate. People can donate to our emergency animal care fund. Uh, that's been a huge help for us. And, and we're kind of doing everything we can to save money and still make sure we're keeping our staff and our animals safe. I'm going to, um, like I said, I'm going to cut myself out here so we can see these elephants. They're much, um, much more fun to look at than me. Um, but Adam, tell me a little bit. I know that you're the elephant manager. You spend a lot of your time with these animals. Tell me about them, about their personalities, and what it's like to be an elephant manager. So being an elephant manager and working with the elephants is a challenge every day, and that's part of why I love it. They are all very unique. So the two behind me, uh, Gadzi is our high energy, running around, always excited to be with the other elephants or see the people when they get here. His half brother, uh, Ludi, who's also back here behind me, he is our bulldozer. He tends to be all about the food and seeking that out. Um, super smart, but really cares more about the food than anything else. And then Bulagi, who you don't see behind me, but we do have here at the zoo, is our old resident. It's been here for a while. Uh, Bulagi acts as the mentor for these young guys. 
Um, he's super relaxed, super laid back guy. Um, normally just goes with the flow and kind of keeps these guys in line when they get a little too hyper as any teenage boys might do. Um, so our challenge is obviously a very physical job, but we really get to enjoy training and working with these super intelligent animals that makes every day kind of worth it. Yes. Where, so where is Milwaukee right now? Milwaukee is out on our main habitat where right behind me is our Boma area. We were doing some uh, work with the elephants earlier and these two are going to be joining him here in a little bit. They just came in here for a little bit of extra attention and some of this uh, bamboo that you see behind me. I've, I've got them all, all zoomed in on there because they're too cute to not look at. Um, but, you know, I have seen a lot of really cool things y'all are doing on your own Facebook pages and your website uh, to entertain people, keep them connected with the animals during this time. So uh, either of you, Adam or Holly, can you tell us a little bit about what the zoo is doing to keep guests, uh, you know, it's still involved with the zoo and with the animals? So we've been doing uh, a ton of social media since this has been closed. Hopefully people have been watching that. We're trying to get out. Um, we're doing some really great just little short videos about um, Meet the Neighbors. So you want to check those out. Just little trips around the zoo. Uh, Jesse from our education department um, is going out in the zoo and getting really great video for people to help them see what's going on at the zoo. Um, and we're also doing a virtual zoo camp. So, um, so there's opportunity for um, kids and families to tune in and get some of those camp experiences since people can't come out here in person. I got to say, I was a dedicated zoo camper when uh, when I was little, so I know how exciting zoo camp is and, uh, and how much fun zoo camp is, and that was something I look forward to every single summer. Um, we got to do a lot of really cool things, so I, I think that's really cool y'all are offering that virtually for the kids that maybe look forward to it every year like I did and, and now can't be there. Um, back to you, Adam. We have some people, I think, that just got on our video a little bit later and um, some people were asking, do, uh, and we talked about this a minute ago, but do the elephants seem to recognize that there aren't as many people? Could you talk a little bit about that again? I don't know if they necessarily recognize the, there's definitely a lower volume, so they may sense that. They can definitely spot us out of the crowd a little easier now when we come around the front of the, the habitat where normally we kind of mix in with the crowd and sneak past them. Um, but they definitely notice when anybody's up there because it is so empty uh, out in front of where, where they normally hang out. On uh, on that same topic, you mentioned earlier that the primates might be the ones who are noticing the most uh, lack of people. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the primates are super intelligent as well, and a lot of joy they get is watching us just like we enjoy watching them. Um, they can pick up on a lot of the, the silly things that people are doing. I'm sure a lot of people have seen videos of uh, animals getting magic tricks done in front of them and all kinds of stuff like that. And the, the primates do enjoy watching people a lot. Now I've got some questions about, um, you know, what your what your opening plans are. But I, um, you know, I know we don't have a date where y'all will open. But when the zoo gets rolling again, Holly, do y'all have any plans of, um, you know, having any big events to open back up, or are you just going to go back into, you know, business as normal? I think for as far as opening goes, you know, we're we're waiting to hear what we hear from from the local and state and federal authorities, and we're working on an opening plan. What you know, what do we need to get the zoo ready to be open, and then we'll start to talk about what that means in terms of how many people and what's open. I mean, obviously, we're eager to get people back out here um, as quick as we can, but we also want to be safe. So, um, so we're still working on that. It's it's a long process. I think it'll take a lot of input from um, from a lot of people. I've got another question for you, Holly. This is from a viewer named Joanna, and she was saying, do you, are y'all offering virtual zoo trips for families that are homeschooling? Because so many schools do those field trips in May um, or even at the end of April to the zoo. So um, if you want to talk about what y'all are doing for those families that are having to, you know, entertain their kids and do their virtual field trips. So we are offering some special content for our members. Um, and then we are doing uh, the virtual zoo camps on our Facebook page. So there's some great videos on there that, um, that people can watch uh, with their kids together and see what's going on. 
And it's important to note too, if you just started tuning in, Joanna, they are doing another program that they talked about earlier called Meet the Neighbors, um, where they're showing different animals and um, giving you a little bit of an insight into that animal. So that would be really fun to, to do with kids. Um, another question from Rick, and this is again for, for you, Holly, sorry to put you on the spot. Um, do, is, do you know anything about the uh, research maybe about animals getting sick with COVID? Is that something that y'all have really um, kept up with or y'all have any precautions in place for that? Yeah, so obviously when the Bronx Zoo Tiger uh, came up positive for COVID-19, um, we took a look at our procedures here. Um, we're following the direction um, of those uh, of those groups and our veterinarians. We have put some additional precautions in place. So far, we haven't seen any signs of our animals having any issues, but but we're always um, we're always super careful with that, whether it's you know flu season or or anything else. So we we've, we've got those measures in place. Was it a bad flu season for the animals uh, at the Birmingham Zoo? No, we've had a pretty good season here in terms of animals being healthy. And um, we're especially cautious with our primates um, because they're so closely related to people. They're much more susceptible to the flu. So our staff wears, um, they wear masks actually all the time, um, even before uh, COVID-19, just to make sure that we're not giving anything to, um, to those animals. I've got one one question from uh, Tamara, excuse me if I'm saying your name wrong, um, but she wants to know if there's a fee for this virtual zoo camp. Uh, no, it's all free. It's all on our Facebook page. So if, um, Tamara, if you didn't hear that, virtual zoo camp is all free. It is all available on the Birmingham Zoo's Facebook page. And uh, it's a really cool resource to keep you and your children or anybody uh, entertained. I would probably still go to zoo camp as an adult if I could. Um, that is, you know, that's just one of those programs they're offering on their page. Um, you know, it, the zoo recently got these two elephants. Um, there was a, you know, there were some changes in the elephant pack there. And now we've got an all-male elephant uh, group, from my understanding. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Adam? Yeah, so here at the Birmingham Zoo, we're committed to managing a all-male herd or bachelor herd. Uh, we were the first place and only place in the country to be dedicated to that for African elephants. Um, so we serve a, a crucial part in the uh, zoo community to serve as kind of middle ground for these young teenagers to kind of learn from an older male. So out in their native uh, habitats, they would kind of get pushed out of their maternal herds around the same age that these, these two came to us. Um, and then their, their late teenage years and stuff, they start getting a little older and they form loose herds with other males to kind of test their limits and work out what having all those extra, that extra testosterone is like, um, kind of learn some manners from Bulwagi and then we're able to send them to other institutions uh, to go breed. And so some of the elephants that we had before uh, have been sent to other institutions. Um, Ajani went to Sedgwick County Zoo in Kansas and uh, Callie went to Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo uh, just earlier last year. And uh, just to reiterate, they their Bulwagi is still at the zoo. He is most known for his broken tusk. And um, so if you go to the zoo, you, you will see him. He is just not in our video today, but everybody, you know, he is fine. He just is, he's got other things happening at the moment. Um, so don't, you know, don't get upset if you don't see him there. Um, something else that we're getting a couple of questions about are, do you have a schedule for when you do the Meet the Neighbors or other videos on your page about when different animals will be coming on? I know somebody mentioned uh, they wanted to see the tigers with all of the recent developments on different documentaries regarding tigers. So do you have a schedule about which animal comes on what day? Uh, so Meet the Neighbors is on Facebook at 1 o'clock, so that's the time to tune in. And obviously, if you miss it, you can always go back and check it out. Um, I know somebody wanted to see a tiger. Unfortunately, we don't have any tigers at the zoo right now, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to hold out for something else. All right, no tigers at the zoo. Sorry, Rick, you are not going to see any tigers on Meet the Neighbors. <laughs> um, but a question that every time I go to the zoo, I have to always ask who I'm, who I'm talking to. And I'm going to have to ask both of you, although I think I know Adam's answer. But Holly, what is your favorite animal at the zoo? What is my favorite animal? I'm, I'm in charge of all the animals, so I always get in trouble um, if, if I say I have a favorite animal. So uh, so it changes um, from day to day. It, it kind of depends. I get to work with everything, and 
um, kind of whatever I'm doing on a given day is my is my favorite thing. Today I got to see elephant training, so so right now today these guys are my favorites. And Adam, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but I think everybody probably knows the answer to that one. Uh, it's the elephants. Uh, I've spent a few years now uh, committed to these guys and just working with elephants, and and I love every second of it. Um, Adam, I got, I got another question for you from one of our viewers named Jenny. Um, she was asking, will the zoo get female elephants and, and mate them there, or will they go to other places to mate? So our boys will go to other institutions, uh, to breed our, our institutions committed to still maintaining that role and, and, uh, helping to raise those good, good mannered teenagers to go out to other institutions to breed. So the two that I talked about earlier. Um, went to other institutions with several females for them to be able to breed. And they've shown uh, proper breeding behavior and manners when they've got there. So it's, it's really been a success story for us. Now I was trying to get my, I was trying to get my camera back on the elephants, but it looks like they have, they have run away from me at the moment. Um, but, <laughs> but, oh, there they are. So, you know, um, any, you know, is there anything you can tell us about what you were training the elephants for this morning? I know I heard um, both of you mentioned that they, that our two, let's see, and Godzi were back there for training. While we're training the elephants this morning, uh, we were just running, going through some basic routines with them uh, to practice some other behaviors. Most of our training here is focused on their medical care. So a lot of it's really cool to watch, but it does have a purpose. Some things like putting their ears out, that's actually where we draw blood. And we do things like that on a weekly basis to monitor their health and make sure that everything's going on with them. So we were just running through um, some training sessions to kind of stimulate their minds as well as practice some of the things that we need for their medical care. So not, nothing too exciting. We're not teaching them to do magic or anything. <laughs> no, they weren't learning how to do magic, not making anything disappear or anything other than these tree branches behind me. Everybody needs a snack. It's, it, you know, everybody's isolated. We all, we all got to have a vice during this time. But I, um, you know, I appreciate both of you for giving us your time today, showing us the elephants. Uh, we know you have a lot going on, having to keep all of these animals in check. And uh, you're probably running on, you know, a little bit smaller of a staff with the social distancing guidelines. So we thank y'all so much for showing us these beautiful animals behind you. And uh, again, for everybody watching, if you didn't catch it earlier, you can catch the virtual zoo camp and the Meet the Neighbors segment on the Birmingham Zoo's Facebook page. You can get the virtual zoo camp, do kinds of activities, and then the Meet the Neighbors shows you behind the scenes look at a different animal each video. So if you're interested in those, check out their Facebook page. And uh, for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on Monday.